We are live. Uh, I'm not because you can't see me, you guys. Yeah. Let's see if it pulls up the wrong window again. And it did. I'm going to have to go all the way to your channel because it's not showing up. I know. That same thing here, too. I think it's just YouTube. Oh, oh your notification's not showing up? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's go like all not the way the... to the channel. That's because YouTube has changed a bunch of things. And a lot of people are not getting notifications. Yep. I noticed. There we go. Now we set. Let's get the the Zoom meeting over here. Over yonder. You know, for like a year, we've been talking about getting all this set up before you go live. And we just don't do it. It's I like know. a whole we, like a unique thing. It's like we just were, a whole thing we do here. We were trying. The thought was there. We are doing we just, our best. <laughs> we didn't just follow through. What up, everybody? We tried. Um, we were always trying. Uh, hey, I caramba. Learning every day. Cliffy. El 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 Fredo. What up, Brian? Top guy, right there. Zeke, what up? Uh, BP, everybody. Um, so. The, the the title tonight, this could happen to you. We're going to get into that. Uh, we have a uh, special guest who is uh, of the um, He's highest, a survivor. Level, <laughs> highest level ranking um, four scan admiral who has just went through a a debacle and we're going to uh, touch on that tonight so uh just gonna check in with everybody um power stroking what's going on what's going on uh i just talked to a guy in virginia today and he said that uh his uh, uh got a client truck from the dealer so they were going to do a fuel system and they said they were quoting them too much so they brought it to independent shop and when he got it they had put gasoline in this puppy and was able to um, uh, replace the fuel system. Finding uh, a kind of hard to find some of these uh, lines and parts outside of the kit uh, that Ford has for the high pressure contamination uh, scenario. Uh, yes, Ray looks cold, 60 degrees. Yes. 47. Even colder. Tom Jubb in the house. Mr. Shelby from Gibraltar. What up? Um, You have your jet engine outside? <laughs> I um, love that jet engine here. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's definitely here in uh, the Northeast. It's, uh, I mean, I don't feel like it should be in the teens just, just yet. Uh, but we're going through some uh, cold temperatures, and uh, it's a big reminder for uh, people who are to be using anti-gel. I know they're using fuel additive, which is absolutely, but uh, there's one step further you have to take when it gets into the 30-degree uh, mark. Um, because as uh, fuel starts to get colder, that paraffin wax starts uh, forming and coagulating, and it winds up forming this gelatin gummy bear-like substance, and that does not flow fuel through your fuel line. So I had a gentleman complain today that he was uh, taking unusually long to start too long it's taking unusually long to start his truck and it was 20 degrees out on a 2267 with 13,000 miles on it and uh, he said he was using additive but did not have anti gel in it so a big reminder to um uh people here um in the colder climates and you guys remember it was a couple of years ago they had cold weather down into uh, the Texas area, and these guys, their their trucks were inoperable because the fuel there had no additive in it whatsoever for anti-gel. So 
Um, what is the recommendation for the anti-gel brand? I actually have it sitting right here. I got to dump some in mine. I got to fill them up. But uh, this is the Arch Oil Winter Treatment. This has got a good heavy dose of uh, anti-gelish stuff in there. And uh, if you go on to uh, their website, you can use PTT to try to save some bucks. I know they have uh, a couple of different cleaners. This winter one, um, this would be my second bottle I've had through it. Um, but uh, I'm liking it. I'm noticing a different difference between the hot shots. I was running the hot shots for a couple of years. And uh, just recently, this last five maybe almost going on six months have been using the arch oil and i mean definitely noticing a difference in fact uh one of my clients who has a 20 trimmer um got him a kit all set up with some arch oil and uh, it was a few days later he said he actually had to dial his pedal monster back because he said it was uh, way more responsive and uh, just seemed like it was running uh, a lot smoother not that it was running bad but i mean the dude's driving his truck you know every day so he'd be You'd be the one to say. Um, 362, we got the gas checking in, or the gas, the fuel guys checking in, uh, currently 20. Oof. Yep. Roger that. 330, uh, 399, I did see it for 399 over here, too. Uh, it's been hovering right at the $4 mark, like four four twenty three. I think it's what it's been sitting at. Um. 21 up in New York. Whoa, whoa. Um, get some soon. Yep, running the hot shots. Went to Arch Hill. Got the winter blend on the shelf in my shop. I have more delivery. That's excellent. Um, you know, one of the, <laughs> uh, one of the things that I just experienced today, um, was a low powering, uh, six seven whom had some crap in the aft axle tank um for the guys that have the pickups we have that midship tank whether it be um you know the s and b or it's the stock tank um we don't really have problems with those poly tanks if you have the one aft axle it's a steel tank and um you know the things are just not conducive to a good environment inside there and uh what i see happen is not only do they delaminate from the inside but the ceiling of the tank starts rusting and the rust falls into the bottom and it's sloshing around and is always getting you know splash and everything and uh, a lot of times when we take out the um uh, the sender at the bottom of the tank you'll see it just all you know filled with sand rust just nasty you know nasty stuff in there what up kurt p bro what up hope you're good man speaking and of cold block heater go ahead if, if they're not metal tanks the poly ones um, suck in on on itself when the mm -hmm. cabin chassis. Uh, Kurt P. He's got a twenty one uh F three fifty DRW. Um, he's got a good ride into work. Uh, fifty minute ride. Engine temp only got up to one hundred and seventy eight. Mind you, it was uh, what was it? Uh, it was twenty degrees today this morning. Uh, you think T-STAT? Um, I don't think T-STAT. I wouldn't say that that would be abnormal for you driving through that cold air and only getting 178. Um, I would assume highly that you would have a check engine light come on if, if something was out of the ordinary. But um, I feel like mine's kind of like that too, unless I've been... You know, just sitting there idly. If I'm idling, I will turn on my uh, hit my park brake, so my uh, BD high idle will will kick on and uh you know sit there at about 1250 RPM. Um, <clears throat> put a grill cover on it. Put a grill cover on it. 74 Lincoln. We got the Lincoln with the front disc brake caliper not releasing. Could removing the slide pins relieving 
and replacing fix the problem? It could be, or you could need a caliper, or it could a need a hose. That's right. That's right. Being a 74, I would be more thinking a hose before anything. Andrew Johnston's got a good question. What's your thought on the Pedal Monster versus the BD throttle control? So the Pedal Monster and the BD high idle throttle is two totally different things. Um, the Pedal Monster is going to be the sweetest, funnest, most noticeable $300 that you're going to spend on your truck. And you're going to be giggling like a little bit. Because uh, that's exactly what I was doing in my video when I was first setting it up. It was it uh, even Ray. I was telling him, "Dude, this is gonna be freaking awesome," and he was giggling too. It was. It's true. It's, as soon as you feel it, yeah, it's no doubt. But to complement uh, your uh, cold weather applications, if if you you feel necessary, uh, that BD kit is the way to go. Super simple. Um, we got a couple of videos if you have a steel body or if you have an Aluma Duty showing you which ones, you know, or how to uh, hook either or of them up. Um, but super, super awesome. What up, Tom? Bo? Sup, big dog? Um, haha. I don't, uh, went over my head. Um, let's see here. I was sidetracked. Kenneth Lake. 1167 is the newer trucks worth a coin. Go through the plan. A new H fuel pump, not C4, new turbo, more fuel. Hmm. Truck is stock. I don't know about the 11s. The 11s, I mean, I, I've, I've worked on some good ones that's had some good miles on them, but I just feel like since the 6.7 came out in 11. They got better with 13. We got different dash in 13. And then we got the 15 and 16. We got the turbo change. And then we got the Aluma Duty. And I love my steel bodies. Don't get me wrong. But I my heart's set with them Aluma Duties. And 17 through 21, a lot of guys have been asking. It's like, hey, you don't like the 23s? I don't. I mean, I do, but I don't. I mm. 21's as high as I'd go. And uh, I, I like... I like um, I, I really like that that platform. They they got a lot of good stuff going on with the Illumina. A lot of creature comforts changed. A lot of the body control module changed. That was the big, big change for that that body style. The F one fifty went through it before, but when I got to the Super Duty, that was we were we were doing business then. Um they're my they're my favorite one. Derringer, genocide. Derringer is going to be coming out. Um, you know they have so much focus on the Duramax and the Cummins Derringer. I feel like they they're not forgetting about us. They just have allocated time to different things. So um, yes, Kurt, I appreciate you, buddy. Hope you have a good uh good holiday. Um somebody just asked, does the pedal monster void your warranty? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I didn't know. Mind that. you, mind you, it is up to the dealer to decide whether or not something is going to be warranty. Just because you have an air freshener hanging from your rear view mirror does not mean your whole vehicle's warranty is void. Just because you put a different air filter on your truck or put a different type of wiper blade on your front windshield does not mean that your warranty is void. The dealership would rather not have a hassle with submitting something to Ford and just tell you that this is not going to be under warranty and not deal with it. That's how it goes. That's what I have seen. Um, that is not how it's supposed to work. Uh, there is a sticker right above your driver's headlight, and I've talked to you guys about this before. Paraphrasing that sticker, it specifically states that any product that is put on this truck and has caused a Ford product to fail is not going to be covered under warranty. We, when I was at the dealer, 
We are an advocate. We're the middleman between the customer and Ford Motor Company. We have to prove that that caused that to fail. Like, did the guy who put this can and air filter in and that tornado thing in his air snorkel and the magnets around his fuel lines to properly align all those electrons, it made his rear window not work? Man, come on. This is and kind of called, malarkey. It's all that. called taking care of your customer. That's what it comes yeah. down to. And, and they don't want with you. Oh, go ahead. And they don't want to. It's time to find a different dealer. Mm-hmm. To be honest mm -hmm. with you, I don't have time to sit there and look at all that stuff. You know what I mean? To see if mm -hmm. it causes I mean, if it's blatantly obvious, yes. If you but, come in with a rod hanging out the side of your block, then that's different. You, <laughs> you have a rod hanging out the side of the block with an X4 tuner in the freaking windshield. We're gonna have to that's have a, different. We're gonna have a talk. The first time I the first time I'll take care of you, the second time, go to hell. That's how I feel about it. I wonder how a pedal monster would be in the Jeep. You are would, the pedal monster. Are you yeah, crazy? No, no. Scary, but... <laughs> you uh, don't one need note a on the pedal monsters. <laughs> it, it is advisable to disconnect your pedal monster when giving the vehicle to someone else because it's going to drive differently. And in a dealer slash warranty situation, you don't want to give them any reason to claim your component may have done blah 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 so just don't give them the ammunition unplug the thing mm -hmm. if you're gonna take it in for warranty unplug it and it doesn't exist don't worry about it don't forget when you opened up that pedal monster and i had a big red tag remove before you take it to dealer there is a sticker in there because well it, it gives them any ammunition to just mm -hmm. not deal with you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So perfect uh, introduction. So Gene Miller here, a channel member, says, I think I remember a video where you said a dealer refused to CP4 under warranty and you helped them out. Maybe he referring to the the Ford Boss, or uh, not Ford Boss, uh, Bearded Ford Tech when he had uh, was something with a, an ambulance. Well, we have uh, uh, the Zoo daddy -o here, and he is a... Uh, owner of a 20 F450. You guys have seen uh, his truck uh, just briefly on the channel. It was in a, a thumbnail and pulling his big old RV. And um, um, he called me up and said, A hey, Rod, I'm on the side of the road. My truck won't start. I'm like, Okay, man, what happened? What happened? Give me the story. I started losing power and then it just shut off. Like you shut the key off, off, or like it. Do, 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 do. No, like you shut the key off, off. Oh, man. Okay. Well, is it cranking? He said, Yeah, it's cranking. Um, okay. Well, what's the next thing we need to do? We got to pull PIDs. We got to look at data. And that's when we found out what was going on. Zoo Dad, what what was your first inclination when you experienced that lack of power? What was the first thing you thought of? Like, oh my god, that just blew its tire! Oh my gosh, what happened? Yeah, pretty much. We were just driving, had an unloaded trailer. We got a shutter, like rough road in the trailer. I got a very quick blip of reduced power on the IPC. And then, just like you said, Arod, it shut off. Nothing. Mm. Fortunately, I was on a downhill, got it over to the side, crank, 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 nothing. Of course, I don't have my scanner or anything with me, so I can't read anything. Make arrangements, we get it back to the house, hook it up, call you, run the codes. Got a PO87, a 22, what was it, Cody, 2297? 91. 91. Oh. And they both just said, dude, you're screwed. And so mm. we got 66,000 miles on it. And I'm religious about fuel and everything. Took a water, took, took a fuel sample, clean, nothing. It's like, great. Now you're on top of your stuff. You're not one that's going to be, you know, letting, oh, this thing's got fuel filters. Huh? Now you're I up on the stuff. I change my fuel filters every 
third oil change so at 15k i was at 14 and change just getting ready to do them actually and uh yeah nothing damn so you're on the side of the road obviously you didn't get it helicoptered had to get that thing towed right so now you're waiting on the side of the road for for, for how long yeah uh well i had my my son-in-law coming we were only about a mile from the house so he drug me back to the house and we got it parked and then i uh started calling around to some dealerships and local dealership i were new on the east coast so no relationship with any dealer so i call the local they're uh four weeks out from even looking at it damn and i, I told them i said well hey we got we got a trip plan this that nope four weeks so i called a couple other local four other dealerships uh, well, if you can get it here, we can take a look and and all this. And the closest other dealership was like 40 miles. And I'm thinking, well, this is going to suck. So we already had a trip planned back to the West Coast, uh, granddaughter's uh, birthday. So my son came up with the idea. And uh, so I flew West. We loaded up in his 16 350 dually wide track, drug my flatbed, 40-foot flatbed trailer back out East loaded it up, drug it all the way back, took it to my home dealership, which I've dealt mm. with for 30 years, had already called them. They said, bring it in when you get in. Wow. Got in, got in, uh, took them a day and a half to Diag. They said, I'll just leave it. We'll get to it. I said, well, not like I'm in a rush. Right. And uh, they, they took a fuel sample. Uh, they had the upper and lower intake off. It didn't look like they cracked the, uh, the CP4 at all, but I, I don't know because I got to see it before they did it. And they said, yep, CP4 fully covered, but parts awesome. are on now from the back order. Awesome. Like, uh, uh. So I was so, geared, up, geared up ready for the fight. And uh, that was on a Wednesday. Monday, they had the parts and it was a part. That's the picture in the background right there, my wonderful CP4. Uh, Wednesday, it was back together. Friday, I picked it up. So it was down at the dealer 10 days total. Wow. Yeah. Lucky. What, uh, what, uh, like when they gave you your diagnosis, did they show you the fuel sample? Did they, did no, they I, anything else? I, I took a fuel sample right when I dropped it off. I had the service writer right there and I had two jars. Uh, two baby jar, uh, baby food jars, and I did a fuel sample, one for them, one for me, preparing for the for the gotcha. fight. Handed okay, it to okay. them. They ended up taking another one on their own. Um, the the tech, I talked to the tech later, good guy, and he said, "No, nope, this thing's clean. This is it. Just took a shit." Wow, wow. So that that's a relief. What? Um... Uh, did what was the initial ETA? Did you wait uh, a couple weeks for parts, or were they able to expedite those from uh, some other? I they capital? they said they said they expedited. Um, and uh, like I said, they they diagged it on Thursday, I think it was, and did the part order, and then they had the parts in on Monday. Wow. So I don't know where I don't know where they got the uh, contamination kit. But it was it was the full kit. So Focus as a, through. as a <laughs> six seven owner, you probably experience what everybody is dreading to happen. Really. Yep. Absolutely. Everybody's yeah, situation is going to be different. You could have had that flatbed loaded with whatever you were hauling, and had the gear, the family, the dogs, and. Yeah, it could have happened because we said we were uh, in two weeks from then we were leaving to come back west and we were driving, so it could have let go in the middle of nowhere. Hmm. Hmm. So, going forward, I mean, knowing what you have been doing and what you're gonna keep doing, do you feel like you could have really prevented this at all? Absolutely. Let me grab some. <laughs> There's the CP4 right there. If you guys yeah, see yeah, that in his background, 
Let's see. Oh, we can't see it. I'm looking. I'm trying to find we it. We can't here. see it. Come closer. Uh, Come closer. I cannot see you. Let me shut off the background here. And... Ah, he hit me with the hiccup. That looks like thing. a. That looks like a DCR box. Ooh, is that an uh, SNS well, logo? You know it. Uh, or it is funny you say that because. Uh, I had it all worked. I had it all worked out after talking with you about it. There we go. No more. No more. That is the only way to get away from this happening to you. And as far as I'm concerned, I feel Zoo Dad's maintenance regimen and the additives he's running are going to be a uh, far. Uh, superior. I don't feel he's using, uh, you know, some Wolf's Head and uh, Walmart uh, branded fuel additive. The only way you guys are going to keep that from not happening is exactly what he showed you. Um, I just was texting a, a gentleman before we got on the live stream. Uh, I believe he's in Texas and he was doing his own. And he sent me some snap some snippets and he broke the uh, the uh, line uh, coming off of the heater core hose want to know how to fix that got time for the <laughs> heater core hose um but you guys are 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 listening and taking care of i feel is the biggest weakest link in the six seven now this guy on on youtube dave's auto uh service or maybe auto center i may be saying it wrong uh he's in utah um he had a a, a great a uh, couple of videos talking about oil pressure in these six sevens and i've reached out to him haven't heard any response but i'd like to get him on the show talking about this other week link um and a little bit about his testing and 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 if we need to change anything or if what he is doing, he was satisfied with, I mean, I wasn't there. So it was, you know, I'm only speaking for what I saw that was displayed on the internet. So um, a lot of guys are putting the DCRs in uh, Zeekster. Uh, we just had him a few months back drive from Louisiana. Uh, about a month ago, we had a gentleman from the Northwest corner of Washington state come out. That was super cool to see him and his rig F450 2019 big, Camper apparatus, fiberglass uh, uh, bed installed, uh, not bed installed, um, a body on. He got a cab chassis. Um, so it's been cool uh, to get these on the trucks and the fitment. I'm telling you guys, uh, Zoo Dad, if you go and you're putting yours in, just wait till you see. I know you've seen the videos and 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 whatnot, but oh. <laughs> Uh, it is the most stockest OEM looking kit. The way the lines are ran, the way they are it's, bent, it it's it's, it's bomb. fits perfect, man. It is. I've bomb. done four of them already. They fit perfect. Mm -hmm. Uh, JM synthetics. A Rod, what's the longest time wise on fuel filters? If haven't hit recommended miles for changing, the book says. 20,000. Mm, not for me. The 60 and 64 were always 15,000. To be honest, I'm doing mine every oil change. Um, we uh, recently put a spin on HSM filter kit on, and I'm doing the oil filters, the fuel filters, they're all spin on. It's a no brainer. And we've gotten uh, a five gallon uh, bucket, goes right underneath it right into the bucket you're not making any mess and it's tall enough to where it's not going to have a you know splash out uh you know it's super it fits like a glove um it works it works out really well um and tom it adds pep as well i am noticing that the trucks that have the eye dashes on because i'm not pulling up uh, frp and stuff you know with with ids or fdrs after the repair but when we're watching frp FRP is boom, boom. I mean, up there. It builds FRP, I feel, considerably different than uh, or faster than the CP4. If we were to do a CP4 replacement right now, no, no failures, no nothing. I'm going to take this pump out and put a new CP4 in. Crank it, 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 crank it. It'd probably be, I'm just saying, crank it, crank it, probably be 
a good 20 seconds, 25 ish seconds, bearded four tech. You know what I'm talking about? Just, I mean, you can't, it's just, you crank it, 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 crank it. Better have them batteries charged. Just keep crank, just keep cranking it. The DCR, no bullshit. Crank it, crank it, crank it, crank it, crank it, crank it, boom, 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 boom. It fires so quick. There's no long crank. It is, uh, that was the one thing that I noticed when we did our first install. It was like, whoa, that fired up way quick because you would usually have that long, you know. Yeah, you uh, prime the system and then, mm -hmm. like you said, crank, 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 vroom. It's, it's, it's purring like a kitten after that. It's, it is quick. I didn't notice that. Uh, PTT, uh, Zach says, what's your thoughts on return fuel heating the fuel in the tank and preventing gelling? Um, I mean, I return like, fuel is heated, technically. I like that, yeah. Um, 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 if you guys remember, not every 7.3 diesel had one of these it was a factory add-on i guess uh a fuel heater and it sat up by the fuel filter and it was a little aluminum circular disc that the coolant would go through and it would tap into some lines there by the fuel filter um but Oh, there's David Brizzy. My DCR came with fuel in it. Uh, it was probably just some shipping oil stuff. I know what you're talking about. Um, but uh, there really isn't any a fuel heater. We're trying to take the heat out of the fuel. We got that fuel cooler now. But that's kind of interesting. I mean, that fuel is going to be super cold in the tank. And then we start the truck we're running it. I well, mean, the coolant's going to heat up the fuel to where it needs to be. So that's well, it's got a fuel heater cool. on the side, doesn't it? That's the fuel cooler. But if the cool but if the coolant is hotter than it is outside, it's gonna raise the temperature of the fuel. It's gonna do the opposite of what it's supposed to be doing. We have a fuel rail temperature sensor. But wouldn't it be kind of cool to know the fuel temp in the tank? Yeah. That'd be kind of a cool PID to look at if like it was on the sender or something, just fuel that would temp. Be cool. temp. Well, you mean, can see pressures, but gonna, you can't see too. That'd be kind of neat. It's probably going to be something that happens anyways. I mean, they're already heating DEF on the 650s, 750s. What I would really, really like is to find a mole in Ford so that I could find out the address in the PCM where I can find the low fuel pressure PID so that I can give that to banks so they can do a firmware update so that we can finally see the low pressure, fuel pressure, and have FRP. I think isn't it's really important pressure, to see the low. Isn't it only like 48 PSI or something like that on the low side? Well, on the 55 movies. to 70. Yeah, shoot. We'll be yeah. at 68 PSI full bore. Well, still, that's low compared to 5,000 to start. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I can get away running a six seven pump on my seven three. And Zoo Dad, he's going to compliment. He's got some beautiful uh, pieces of equipment behind him. We got some uh, HSM uppers and lowers. Going to put on the. Uh, looks like he's got Donaldson there uh, for the DPK. We got Baldwin and a kitty cat. Um, uh, it, it's funny and comical after the fact because uh i mean come on guys uh we don't read instructions man we just put the stuff together <laughs> honey i told you to read the instructions ah, we don't need to so why do we read the instructions right i mean you got the lines and some fittings and this one's this size and this one's this size i mean you, you fucking match them together like come on right in's gotta go to in and out's gotta go to out right no problem hey that's not how it works. In goes to out, and out goes to in. I made that mistake. Cody and I made that mistake. And we're like, man, <laughs> why Why are we getting all this like air coming from right. the SNS disaster kit? Because that was when we had the plastic filter on there, and you could see it. 
I'm like, it's frothy. It should not be like this. Well, yeah. Good evening, gentlemen. Hello. Hello. Look Good evening. That. Is it? Wait, what? Oh, I'm late. Uh, no, Aaron. no. So you're 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 right on time. Oh, okay. I, cool. I, I made that mistake too, Aaron. Only doing the DCR, and it says like eleven through. I think it was eleven through sixteen. They want you to change the gasket on the vacuum pump. Mm-hmm. I t- totally skipped that highlighted area and stuck the vacuum oh. pump back on there. It's <laughs> yeah. like leaking yeah. oil. I was like, oh my god, <laughs> take it back up. That's funny. That's funny. That's funny. What is up with you, Mister? I do cars. Oh man, I can't even get into it. There's so much. Um, oh, haircut time though. It is. Yes. Um, I looked at flights. <laughs> They're a little bit more expensive than than the haircut. So I'm probably gonna have to get it cut by somebody else. I'm sorry. I got you, man. I got you. I got you next time. Okay, that sounds good. Um, what's up with you guys? What are you guys up yeah, to talking about tonight? We're, we're talking about uh, the CP4 failure. We got um, you know a channel member on tonight who uh, just unfortunately went through this you know debacle with the high pressure fuel system contamination and and it was under warranty one of the wow you know, that's good you know didn't have any problems wasn't fighting didn't have to get a lawyer didn't have to call ford and it it worked out to his favor so at least he was you know working with a you know a commendable dealer that you know took care of and you know followed their due diligence so yeah um well that, um, that's that's good to hear that uh, it's covered because that's up a- pricey bill when it's not yeah yeah i mean he was almost lucky enough to get a dcr put in it almost wow (laughs) wow that would have been uh that would have been like too good that's like that's 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 just too good Hey, Cody, uh, CP Garage here uh, probably is a better candidate for this. Jeremy has got a question. What do you think in an OBS, if he was trying to find one, what would be what would be like your top three things that you're going to look at? Mine would be the lift pump in the valley. Make sure that it's not yeah. full of fuel. You're going to be looking leaking. for fuel and oil in the valley. Mm-hmm. Um, lift pump. Probably oil yeah. cooler. If it's all. Yeah, you're gonna be looking at the oil cooler too, because I mean, if it's covered in nastiness, it's gonna have to probably come off. I guess the you temperature know. is gonna be big with that, because depending on what part of the country is it in, it could be all rotted out. See what something. kind of maintenance record they've got. It's gonna be the next big thing. Hmm. I mean, I bought mine with three hundred something thousand miles, but I have a stack of maintenance records like that. And to know that you could run straight trans fluid in it, so that's that's or a, a plus too. Waste vegetable oil, waste uh-huh. motor oil, jet fuel. We want to put it at kerosene, some okay. gasoline mixed with oil. Uh, Aaron was doing some quad tires, missed the whole dang thing. <laughs> Tell me to be places fifteen. Ah, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. Been there. <laughs> wicked game yeah been there done that <laughs> yeah um i think i missed a gentleman who had asked a question about no ray is not darth vader no <laughs> can he be Everybody... anakin skywalker then <laughs> I, darth Maul. I don't want to be anakin he was weak-minded Ah, uh, yes, the early 6 O's did have a heater. Ah, uh, Adrenocide snuck one in, you little fox body. So, yeah, the uh, diesel horizontal fuel conditioning module, which was where the fuel pump and fuel filter was on your 6 O, it had a little, uh, I guess it was like a little element heater thingamabob in there, but they later uh, deleted that from uh, assembly. So if you got a new manifold on because it the Allen drain stripped out, it would not come with a heater, which in turn forced you to buy a new little jumper harness that went from the frame wiring to the fuel pump. So um, yeah, a lot of times I was a pain in the butt to try to find that wire. Um, all right, here it is. Yeah, Jeff S. with a... Looks like a slow marrow for his icon. Slow marrow. 
Uh, fellas, is there something like a fuse or change that has been done to a 22F450 to have 12 volt on the trailer 7 pin hot at all times? Thanks in advance, guys. Um, so there is a procedure to keep the 12 or to activate the 12 volt. Um, it's in the owner's manual. It's uh, you got to. You got to have the trailer hooked up. You got to be in drive. Um, I want to say there's something with the driver's door. I can't remember. I made a video talking about it because a lot of guys want to have that ability to have that 12, that 12 volts right there at the seven pin. But for whatever reason, Ford doesn't have it set up where you can just have that, that 12 volts right there. And a lot of guys were struggling to charge their batteries on board. They're, you know, trailer or their camper or whatever the, whatever the deal was. So, um, all the time, no, uh, limitless. And I were trying to work on something. I, I have a intermittent workaround for that, but I would want to devise something a little more, uh, fused, um, to, um, um, make it a little better for you guys. I don't want you guys just, you know, putting a paper clip in like we used to uh, back in the days for, you know, checking codes and stuff. Um, but if you do have uh, a 23, uh, there is a, a four scan change that you can use to enable, uh, that, which there's nothing one for anything below that. Is that just for 23? Really? Damn. Yeah, change in the BCM. Mm. Mm. Uh, through as built or as configuration? Built. As built. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. If anyone can get a bad 6.2 manifold, I'd love to get my hands on it to see how they fail and if something can be done to fix them. You uh, want it in one piece or two pieces? I want all the pieces. <laughs> uh, one okay. of my subscribers, his just went bad on his, and he replaced his intake manifold. Everything is good to go now. I'll see if he'll send me his old one. Okay. That sounds awesome. Those things I'm are on intercalactic I'm just, back order. I'm just surprised there's not a repair for it. Hmm. Well, you know it's bad when they're on like a three-year back order, and there's like seventeen hundred of them on back order. That's that's really not as bad as I expected. I expected there to be another digit in the number of back order because they made a lot of those trucks. Bearded Fortech, how many um, meat wagons do you have with the DCR? Uh, running the DCR right now, four, hmm. and I got they... two more. I got Are they two more steel degree. bodies. Are they aluminum duties? Uh, I got seventeen, uh, seventeen, sixteen, fourteen, a uh, twelve, and then I got to do. Uh, did you replace it because they had a high pressure fuel system failure, or you just replace it to replace it? One of them was a failure. The seventeen was a failure. It had metal all in it. Mm. Uh, the sixteen was a failure, and. One of the other ones is the one I messaged you about. I, I kept getting the low pressure code. Uh, ended up doing both fuel rails on that one anyway. Um, two of them actually had metal in it. And they they completely annihilated. Uh, the other two I got to look at. I haven't completely diagnosed yet. I haven't had a chance to look at it. But since I got them, I might as well throw them in, right? Might as well. Just might as well upgrade it so I don't have to worry about it later. Let's see DCR here. the world. I wish I could figure out how to put one of those things in a freaking three liter. Those DCRs are nice, man. What is she doing? Passed out. <laughs> what a little goof. Um.
Um, so I shut off the number four injector and it goes away. Resetting fuel tables. Can that be done with Forescan? Can you reset min mass fuel tables? I think you can, can't you? Yeah, I think you can. Yeah. Oh, that might depend on year because I had a 15 that w there was nothing for that in it. Hmm. Um, let me go to this really quick. Um, we have a lot of trucks on the road. We are here because of our trucks. We look to our trucks for fun. We like modern our trucks. We like to take care of our trucks. That's what brings us. This is why we are in this community. We get to the point. Damn it, boy racing just says, What's a DCR? He's I want to get a I want to get a barbecue. Right there. Um that's what a DCR is. Yeah, right there. Yeah. We get to the point in ownership where we're gonna have to finally pay this turd off. Now, when I heard that these new trucks' life expectancy is less than six years old, that kind of hit me right in the gut. I'm like, for real? That's stupid. Where, where was that? Dude's going to take out six, six year loan, and it it's it's completely depreciated. So when you get to that where you're paying off your truck or you uh, finally got the title, is it um, – um, I mean, I know that's a goal for some people. You know, you either put a lot down or you've been eating a $1,800 payment a month or – or whatever the case is, but um, when you get your truck paid off, is there something that you do? Do you finally do, I'm going to get them wheels, I'm finally going to get them big boy wheels and tires, I always want to just paid off my truck. Do you do that? Is there something, what, 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 what do you guys do? If it's important that we all get to the end of our payment uh, tier and Paying this turd off, spent seventy thousand dollars, spent ninety nine thousand six hundred dollars to get it to have an FX four sticker on one side and a tremor sticker on the other side. The power stroke emblems on the side are crooked. What is Dude. going on with these things? And then somebody somebody said some have eighty four month loans. Oh, I, saw, I, I saw a 96 month loan on, on oh one. 96? Yeah. Oh my well, goodness. Well, I mean, a $100,000 truck, you need that long to pay it off. But could you imagine oh. how much interest you're Fluffy. paying over 96 months? Oh. You're like, probably paying another $100,000. Yeah, oh another truck. No. Mm. No way. Mm. That would. Mm -mm. Unless you're getting zero percent financing, there's no way I would. They don't ever... even. They don't even do that anymore, do they? Yeah. No. Yeah. They do. What, well, it's like point, point something, but it's close enough to zero. USAA there. does point nine, I think. Yeah, I won't. There's I... a lot of cars. Uh, I wouldn't say super duties per se, but just cars, you know, just in general, uh, on dealers' lots. And I I was talking with Ray, um, you know, I think it was uh, end of last week or so. I mean, it's just this model that has been going on for 50 years or more, more than 50 years um, at the dealer and having, you know, this is where you go to get your car. This is where you go to get a service. This is this that 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 entity interaction that you have to take your automobile to. Um, it's not working any. And. The pay scheme and the warranty and um, this, like, you almost don't need 
salesman anymore. Yeah. You almost don't need a realtor anymore. So why have a salesman? Why have a sales department at the dealership? So there goes your your whole 50 years of what we've been accustomed to. Well, that and, should mean that the trucks get cheaper, right? Well, <laughs> then you got the UAW, and now we want more and more and more. And it's like now these automakers, you don't think they're going to want to take more from their profits, do you? No. I mean, no. So for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. What that reaction is going to be, we're probably going to find out down the line as time progresses but um it's kind of hard sitting on an 86 month at point eight on my 23 i don't even use dealer financing i get pre i get pre-approval from the bank or wherever i use a specific place i get my loans from and because they'll add two percent to your loan Yep. interest to catch extra money from you. Oh, so most I don't, definitely. Like, when I did my wife's, I didn't even... I, I I went in with... I've already approved him with the amount and all that. Damn. Yeah, that... The interest, man, that's... That's where they get you, man. That's where uh, they I, get you. There's there is very few parts of a dealership that I dislike more than the finance department. <laughs> I I just I when I worked at the dealer, I remember all the slimy stuff they used to try to pull. Yeah. And I remember looking at the lead finance guy, and when he was telling me the story, like he was proud of it. And I was like, are, are you are you happy about this? Like you feel good about this? Because I wouldn't feel good about this. And he's like, Oh, well, there's no emotion in it, it's just business. I love when they're like, hey, I'll sell you exactly. this plan and that plan, and then we can get the payment down, but you got to buy like this extended warranty. Yeah. And then yeah. This, this, yeah. This, Four square uh, method. Like, yeah. I'm like. Did you guys see that? Um, it might have been a short or a reel on Facebook. It was like when you, you were pre approved when you go to the dealer and it shows the salesman going around the car, and the guy's like, oh, are you ready to go? You paying cash? He's like, no, I got a check. He goes, yeah, we can do checks. And he hands, he goes, this is pre-approval from PinFed. We can't take this. That $90,000 car with the $20,000 extras, that's gone now. That's how they treat you when you're pre-approved for things. Yeah. So what you wheel and deal and get your price. And then you get pre-approved through your bank with the cheaper interest rate. Now, now the dealer doesn't want to work with you because they can't upsell you on everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dude had a point. He says oil field, man. I got that oil field money. <laughs> I like to work on a couple of them rigs. Check out that uh, uh, that side of the industry. I've never seen them uh, uh, welder rigs and them freaking flatbed setups you guys got. They look pretty cool. Like it was a brand new truck. Um, I had seen it was a. Uh, I think it was a Ram. They had big ass rims and tires, and I mean, it, it, it looked fancy. But on the back, it was like an old patinaed out, uh, custom welding bed. And I mean, it looked it looked old, like a fifties patina old. But it was on a brand new truck. It looked and it looked kind of cool and you know rugged with the welding shit. So it was kind of kind of cool. Got a lot of those down here. Oh, Dave Muscat's in here. What's up, my man? Got my 15 Explorer Limited on A plan. Yeah, yeah, with 7,500 cash back, 3K on trading. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, never will get that again. No way. Hello, Elaine, if she's watching. Hello. Hello. So the truck may look good, but is it reliable? All these people that deck out there with rims and I mean I you say that, but I bought a wrecked welder's truck, a Cummins truck, and it had it wasn't powered up in the rack because they couldn't get the hood open. And I got the hood open and it had three hundred and seventy thousand miles on it. And it had been blasted dead on in the crank, like 
this thing was just hammered and yeah. we pulled the front end off of this thing put a jump box on it fired up and idled like it was running 10 minutes ago what? no oh, i meant that okay. as in people that spend the money on rims and paint oh, jobs okay. and stuff like that it looks oh, good yeah. okay cool I thought you were talking about those, well, all the welding trucks and stuff. No, 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 no. Well, that's Some not of those run better than money. any vehicle. You, you got to get the 24s. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you got to have 24s on your oil field truck. Mm. Right, right. What's up with you, Fluff? You uh, got out from underneath that dash? You, you feeling cramped? Oh, that that wasn't mine. That was a buddy. I was just oh, like, okay, oh, okay. A, that'll be a good one. Ah, but, uh, you know, end of the month stuff. Yeah. Trying to crank out work. I was going to do a... Uh, uh, exhaust valve timer and sprocket for the lower oil pan and oh my goodness uh oh on some treasure uh oh treasure <laughs> yep. a whole bunch of glitter down there I was like damn wasn't registering on the dipstick when I originally pulled the uh the cover for the sprockets well, there was no metal there of course it's screened but mm -hmm. down in the pan I was like damn so now it needs an engine what what kind of engine is it? It's a one point five liter, I believe. Out of what? On a rogue. No, oh, it's on rogue. The, the one five turbo or whatever. Yeah, with the variable compression engine. Yeah. At least a Frank glitter paint. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah hey, I you, was that. You guys ever get cores of those in? I I can't get my hands on any of those variable compression engines. Nobody wants to send me one. Um. No, not really. Okay. I haven't seen a lot of them fail, to be honest. Still a new engine. I won't speak too much on that yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I just look at your typical Nissan owner, and it doesn't matter how good it is. Someone's going to blow it up. True. Mm -hmm. Very true. I was at the Chevy dealer yesterday, and it was a little car. It was a four-cylinder. I don't, I don't remember what it was. Uh, but dudes was putting pistons in it. We would never oh, put yeah. pistons in these things. It's probably a one five. Those things melt pistons all the time. Did they did have you a recall take on the that? Or it did. Yeah. No, he did it right in the car. Yeah, yeah. You do it in the car. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. Mike, you just put pistons in this thing? I did. I, I mean, what? There, there, there's nothing under the motor. You just pull a pan, crack That's your caps loose, take the head off, slide them up the top. Wow. And they got wow. they, have you seen those uh pre-sized piston ring compressors mm -hmm. where they're just sized for the bore and you just put them on top of the bore and you slide oh, them yeah. straight yeah. down and no then kids. it's yep. yeah. Huh. They're like 30 bucks a size or 25 bucks a size. They're just plastic things. And that way you don't have to deal with tension and compressing yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. You just you just boop. put them on the bore and boop, pop them right in. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah, my mom's Malibu got some new pistons because it fell yeah. under a recall. Mm -hmm. The four oh, cylinder, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. One yeah. Five. You do it in the block. Pull the mm -hmm. pan down. No, or in, in chassis, you pull the pan down and and just pull it right apart. Right I there. I was like, oh no! Hopefully, it runs after this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if many people have the skill to rebuild engines like that anymore. Yeah, I don't, I don't. I don't. I think that's a thing of the past for sure. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. All the people that, yeah. that were good at it and did it religiously with their eyes closed, they're all getting out of the field, retiring and stuff. So, yeah, dude says he's getting like freaking nineteen hours of pot for them things and do it in one day. Warranty. I'm like, God damn, bro. <laughs> I'll take my six sevens any day and all day. You can keep them uh, little four cylinders. Oof, no overhead cams, no VCT, uh, uh, no five four three valve nonsense on my six sevens. No way, Jose. Everybody, yeah, I appreciate you all for watching. <laughs> we have some some business to take care of here in the after party. Um. Um, make sure to stay tuned to Friday. I have a unique video for us six seven technicians. When you don't have the tool, you need to do it this way because you probably won't have this tool. Everybody, Zoo Dad, thanks for coming through. 
Eric, I do cars, and Fluffy. We'll see you in the after party. Everybody, stay.